If you're at an auction and you win a bid for certain types of things, that could actually be bad news for you. And that's because of the winner's curse. And this actually also applies to other things like buying a company or investing in a winner-takes-all sort of uh, company in an industry that's uh, perhaps digital. So I think this is an important concept to understand. And the best way of thinking of this is to imagine an auction that's a second price auction. And the only thing you really need to know about that kind of auction for now is it's actually in your best interest to bid what you believe something is worth. Like bid your exact valuation. And this is going to work in other types of setups, but I think it's just easier to visualize if you imagine people bidding what they expect something is valued at. And let's imagine that I fill this jar with pennies. In which case, ask yourself the question, how much would you bid for this jar full of pennies? So now you have a number in your head and you're imagining you're in an auction room with 500 other people who are also bidding on this jar. And everybody's gonna bid more than two pennies because obviously more than two pennies belongs in there. But we don't know exactly how much is in there. That's like an estimate. Now, one other thing to take into consideration here is the fact that on average, groups are pretty good at estimating the number of pennies in a jar. But those estimates sort of fall around an accurate-ish mean, and there are going to be a lot of outliers on both sides. So this is a bell curve probability density function, and we might imagine if the actual value of that, uh, that jar of pennies is $100, and I have no idea how much the actual value would be, but let's just say the real value is $100. Then there's going to be people who bid 120, people who bid 80, um, there's gonna be a couple of strong outliers out here bidding $300, a few people only bidding $10, but on average, they're going to sort of end up clustering around the real value of the penny jar. And you can probably already start to see the problem. The person who wins the bid for that jar is going to be the person who's farthest out on the outlier spectrum. The $300 person is going to win the bid. In which case, that person is cursed. They're paying $300 for something that only has $100 in it. They're giving up $200 of money. And that's the winner's curse. The winner's curse is the fact that the person who wins any given bid-like thing is on average going to be someone who overvalues it, particularly if there are a lot of people in the pool. The only times the winner's curse applies are when part of the value for the item is inherent in something in uncertain about that item. So if you're talking about bidding on dolls that you have personal attachment to, or if you're bidding on clothes or um, certain types of chairs or whatever, if the value is mainly your personal value, there's no uncertainty about what it's worth. You know how much it's worth to you, in which case that the winner's curse does not apply. Now, of course, the example of a company matters a lot here because if you're bidding on purchasing a company, then you're trying to predict something that is the future earnings of that company, the future profits, which is inherently uncertain. And it might even be more uncertain than the number of pennies in the jar, which of course you could measure and you could you know, try to calculate it in some ways. Whereas the future earnings of a company depend on the future regulatory environment, the future stock of educational capital in the United States. There's so many future uncertains in buying a company that on average, the person who wins the bid for a company is likely overvaluing it. Now, of course, if there's only three people bidding on the jar of pennies, there's a good chance that the winner may actually be someone who's below the $100 mark. Like you randomly pick three people from this distribution, maybe it's not so bad to be the winner. But if there are 500 people, almost certain the winner's going to be sort of out here as an outlier. And that's the winner's curse. And I think it can actually be helpful in terms of thinking about winner-take-all industries. 
So with tech monopolies right now, we are observing certain companies that are willing to lose money year after year after year. And sometimes we ask the question, why are they continuing to keep that company alive when it's losing so much money? And I think part of the answer has to do with the winner's curse, and part has to do with this winner-takes-all economy. Because those people are, are sort of banking on the fact that eventually they will be a monopoly. For example, 2015, YouTube lost money. Of course, YouTube is a subsidiary of a, a bigger company. But if it's losing money, why not just get rid of it? And the bet to keep it going and keep investing and keep it alive was that eventually that would pay off. And it would pay off big because of the monopoly power and the network effects that go along with these digital industries. So I, I do think we need to be thinking about for digital industries that are investing money year after year and losing money year after year, is the winner's curse something that's going on?